am Rich. I play bass in the band The Silence. And uh, what we have today is the new creation from Dark Glass Electronics, the Atom bass distortion pedal. And I was lucky enough to get one of these fairly early, so I figured we'd go through a couple sounds, uh, sounds that it puts out and sort of compare it to another Dark Glass uh, preamp, the Microtubes X Ultra, and just sort of go through some of the settings and what they do and uh, just give you an idea of what it sounds like out of the box. Uh, so today I'm uh, playing on my Dingwall Super, uh, Super J uh, five string tuned to uh, A, E, A, D, G. So it's just down tuned a little on the uh, low string. Um, so let's get going. And what I'll do is just go to my first preset here on A, which is sort of a low, more of a low gain. Just about as low of, as the gain as I could set on the pedal and show you sort of what that sounds like. That also has, it's on the first dis distortion level here and has some compression built in. But as you can see the, on the gain indicator, the drive indicator, it's pretty much down to zero there and has some of the character turned up and the blend almost full as well. So as you can tell, it's, that's a nice overdriven, pleasant tone. I really like that one. Um, it's usually a little more gain than I would play on a normal song. And then from there we can go up, I've preset on a B, sort of a, I, I turned the drive probably up halfway. Um, yeah, it looks like that. So obviously you can tell we got a lot more fuzz going there. And then on preset C, I sort of put it in more of a fuzz zone, pretty much the drive maxed out. So we got a lot of that fuzz tone there. Not, not fuzz pedal fuzz, but it, it's up there. And uh, so from there, a couple of the features will switch back to my uh, my original preset. Um, what I what I like about the pedals, it does have a very pleasant sound even with the gain all the way down. Um, as a comparison, what I should probably show you is how it compares to the Microtubes X Ultra. That's the pedal I've been running before I got the Atom, and obviously not playing much, so I'm still technically running it. So what I'm going to do is turn off the compression and the distortion of the Atom. I'll just leave the cab sim on, and I'll turn on my Microtubes to the clean channel. And a little bit of the distortion channel as well. So I got a, sort of that nice clean clanky tone out of that. Now what I'll do is turn that off <coughs> and uh, go back to my Add them here, preset A with a little bit of gain. Now that was about as little gain as I could get. So you could see that it's definitely dirtier than the Microtubes X Ultra just as a baseline. You probably won't get that sort of, if you're looking for just a bit overdriven tone, you probably won't be able to get that out of there. It might depend on your input levels, what kind of guitar you're using. This guitar isn't incredibly hot, so I, I thought it was a good baseline for that. But we can sort of go over some of the, what some of the knobs on it do. I won't touch on the compression much. Everybody sort of knows what that does. And it's a pretty simple compression that actually um, compensates the logarithm and it compensates with the level. So it's, it's sort of a dummy proof compression. You just sort of turn the knob and find what you like. So that's very nice. Obviously the drive, so I'm on preset one, but as soon as I touch one of these levels, one of these uh, knobs, it's going to change. You see the light go up because it's kind of set maxed out already. So now we got the indicator letting me know that I'm using an edited preset right now. So, so you can listen to that fuzz. So you can... Back to that pleasant tone and then all the way up to that fuzz. So now we have the character button as well, and I found the character button, I, I, I really actually like that a lot. Um, it gives you sort of, you know, it doesn't become unusable is my, is my opinion on it. So if I turn my drive all the way down, and I turn my character all the way down. 
So it's obviously taken some of the some of the highs out of it, not to have the character all the way up. But I find that even turning it maxed out from zero, where you might expect the tone to become unusable, it actually stays within a very usable range. And I think even Nali in his video said something like that, like don't be afraid to max it out. And actually, I pretty much like it maxed out, quite honestly. The, the blend button's pretty self-explanatory. You, you know, you blend in. I actually prefer uh, most, of, most of my sound to come from this pedal and just have my original tone creeping in a little bit. Um, I haven't had a lot of time to play with it. Level self-explanatory. Um, but the other features on it that I really love, down here we got five um, switchable cab sims, which is great if you're you know, playing long shows and using this as your, uh, your only amp, essentially. And then we have the distortion, different types of distortion down here. So you can obviously, these are new and they'll be featured on the Quad Cortex, I believe. But we can switch. You can do that with the compression too. You can have five you know, different levels of compression. But um, we can switch from the distortion. So I'll go back to my first preset just so we can change right out of there. And then I'll switch between the distortions and just sort of play a couple notes. Right there, obviously, when we turn the distortion to like distortion number five, and then we turn our gain all the way up, we're pretty much sitting at a fuzz pedal, pedal, pedal level of distortion at that point. <coughs> you got to cut that. <laughs> so, going from the distortion, now what we have is we, if we default back to, back to my preset A, um, we have the cab sims. Now. I actually took the time to load some of my favorite cab sims on there, like the Nali Mega Mel. There's another Nali. I actually have an orange sim on there as well. You'll probably find that mine are probably all pretty similar because that's what I like. I did have one in there that came out a little different, but it's really easy just to cycle, turn it off. Skipped over one. really nice you know I, I know they came out with that in their their other um, headphone amplifier pedal but I really wish I could load five cab sims on my micro troops X ultra and uh, what I have found is you know if you're gonna replace the X ultra if you think you're gonna replace it with the atom you, you may be able to I don't think I'm going to I think I really enjoy the cleans I can get out of this and it's probably not meant to be a direct replacement I really enjoy the cleans and even pairing you know I haven't had enough time to play with it but I imagine I'll be able to pair sort of my clean preamp settings here with some adjustments to the gain tones there, which I can try. I'll, I'll put it on my setting A and I'll just turn on, I'll play a riff and then I'll turn on my uh, Microtubes X Ultra. Might get a little noisier, but. And you get that really metal, meany clink tone right there. And I, I find that with some little more experimentation could be really cool. So in the end, I, I, I probably won't lose my Microtubes X Ultra for sure. I'll probably keep keep both of them on my board. Um, so let's move on to the tuner. The tuner of this is very interesting. One of the biggest reasons I went for this is maybe I can get rid of a preamp on my board. Maybe I can get rid of the tuner. Um, that would be cool because this, this is a large profile pedal as you see compared to the Microtubes X Ultra, which is not a small pedal. This thing's probably twice the size if you were to flip this. So. The tuner's a little awkward to do by hand because you got to press both of the middle and right button down. So it gives you two LEDs indicating that you're in tuning mode. Now your note's going to appear on the left, and this is sort of awkward until you get you get the sense of it. So I turn up my bass, and I'm going to play my open A, low A string. Now. What I've noticed is this is supposed to be a very good tuner for low level, low, low tuned instruments. Sometimes I, can, sometimes I can get the A up there, but I don't really have a lot of luck with it. If I go up to my octave, then I get a little more luck. Now if I go down to my E, 
you can see the letter E. It took me a while to get this, probably a half an hour to even understand how this worked. You can see the letter E in there. Go down to my higher A. You can see the A shape. And so forth. D. And the G. So it's not super difficult to once you get it. Um, if you want to tune sharp, you'll see, you saw that little indicator in the, mid, uh, the middle right. So if I tune up a little bit here, maybe I can get the sharp going in there. There we go. So that's an indication of a sharp. So I'll come back down here. Um, so like I said, the biggest disappointment is if I can't even get my A tuned on that without using my 12th fret, uh, I don't know how useful it is for my basses that go even lower. Um, I, I haven't tried it on a standard tuned bass yet or a standard tuned five string, but so I'm slightly disappointed. It's nice to have it. It's very nice to have it as an additional backup tuner if you need it because it'll it'll get you out of a pinch. But um, uh, maybe they'll have a maybe they'll have a factory update for it. I've I've heard little rumblings on the internet that maybe we're we're in for some updates still. Um, so let me get out of tuning mode. Get my loud bass back here. I don't not have a noise gate hooked up. Overall, I am really digging the tones I get out of it, especially paired with the Microtubes X Ultra. Um, one of the neat things I like about it is that you can uh, the um, the cab sims actually come out of the quarter inch uh, slats as well, not just the DI versus on the Microtubes Extra or, or all their other preamp pedals, they were only coming out of the DI. Um, I actually found myself using, at some point, using uh, two cab sims, and it actually sounded kind of cool. Not something I'll probably do on a regular basis, but uh, other features, it has the MIDI and the headphone, uh, the headphone out, the MIDI, the MIDI in, um, USB, you can hook it up into the dark glass suite and uh, get all your cab sims loaded in there. So I, I love the dark glass suite, that's pretty cool. And you can you know, load all your cab sims and have your bass hooked in while you're playing them to see which ones sound good because you have five slots. Uh, probably has a lot more features than, than I even would ever use, but overall, I, I think it's a pretty solid pedal right now. And uh, like I said, not, not enough for me to ditch my preamp completely, but it, it'll definitely be a good compliment for those times that I want a grittier tone for sure. So, I mean, that's, that's basically sort of a general overview of the pedal. I'm not getting anything super technical because I'm not super technical myself. I sort of get things, I, I find my way around them and try to find the tone I'm looking for. I don't know enough about electronics to uh, be overcritical of anything. Um, so I'll just give you a couple little lines of, you know, the different strings and how it sounds on my my main setting right now that I put together in about 10 minutes and you can judge for yourself. Thanks for watching.